Hi guys, welcome to the first episode of Sweet Talk. I'm so, so excited to be doing this. I have honestly been wanting to do a podcast for such a long time, but I think the only reason I haven't is because I was just like so nervous and I was like, what if no one listens? But then I was thinking, I'm typically talking a lot to myself, so even if one person listens, then that is a huge improvement to what has been going on previously. I recently read this book, Confessions of a 40-something and it kind of just inspired me to make this podcast. Honestly, like after I read that, I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna do it. If Nell is gonna do it, I'm gonna do it. Also, if you haven't read that book, I highly suggest it. It's awesome. I wanna talk about a lot of different stuff, but what I do want is I wanna be able to talk about things that I have like some experience in. But today we are starting on quite a light, fun topic, which is sobriety Yay! and addiction. It's not as scary. As it seems, I swear to God, we're gonna make this really fun, really casual, and hopefully you'll learn something, and hopefully if you're going through something similar, it'll help you not feel so lonely. I know that when I was first getting sober, it was really scary. It's a huge part of my life, it's a huge part of who I am. I got sober when I was 22 years old in Los Angeles, and I've been sober for almost four years. My sobriety date is October 26th. But yeah, I just thought this was a good topic to start on because honestly, without sobriety, I wouldn't be who I am. I would not be here talking with you guys right now. Um, it's this, it's the thing that allowed me to go to school. It's the thing that allowed me to find love. It's the thing that allowed me to just actually create a proper life, um, a life that I am somewhat proud of. So I just thought I'm not really me without it. So I felt it was a good thing to start with. And just so you guys can understand me a bit more if you ever want to ask any specific questions, like you know a little bit more about who I am. This can definitely be a two-parter or a three-parter, or I can definitely go back into more specific parts of sobriety if anyone has any questions after this episode. It's a huge topic, so much to talk about. So I feel like today we might just cover the bases, cover my experience. The one thing that always freaked me out about getting sober and telling people I was sober was the stigma against it which I never understood. I feel like the stigma for any other mental health issues has been opened up completely, cracked open wide, and like no one's afraid to talk about it, but for some reason addiction is still one of those things that like people are a bit like, like, I don't really wanna talk about it. I don't really wanna be known as someone who is that. I guess if I look through the eyes of someone who's listening to society, then yes, it's like, really scary to talk about, it's not something people want to be open with, as much as like just being anxious or just being depressed or anything like that. So yeah, but anyway, I want to talk about it, I'm very open about it, and I'm probably not gonna ever change my perspective on it, which is, it's who I am, it's not really my fault, and why would I be ashamed of something that I kind of really had no control over? The first thing I would like to say, which I didn't even understand as an alcoholic myself, but I was in an AA meeting one day, and this is just how I like to start talking about alcoholism, just because it puts things it it puts it into perspective in a way that like I didn't even really think about it. A woman at an AA meeting I went to, by the way, is Alcoholics Anonymous. It's a program you can join if you feel like you want to get sober. But I was talking to her and she said the craziest thing that I didn't understand when she first said it which was that alcohol was not the problem, alcohol was in fact the solution. And I was like, I am literally sitting in a back room of a church with complete total strangers because I can't stop drinking. That is obviously the problem. Drinking is obviously the problem. Alcohol is obviously my problem. Like, what are we talking about here? She then explained it to me and it was literally like, of course. Typically people who are alcoholics, typically are usually suffering from some sort of underlying issue, could be anxiety, could be depression, could be BPD, could be OCD, could be schizophrenia, it could be anything. One of these people with this underlying condition went to a party or they started college or they went fishing with their dad over the summer or they stole a little bit of like wine from communion or something like that. And they took the drink and they realized that when they drank, they felt immediately calmer, better, more confident, and just like a a huge improvement on the personality and like internal feelings. And so they continued to do that every time they felt too strongly, they would drink, no matter what the consequences were, because in that moment when they felt bad, they knew that they could pick up a drink and it would make them feel instantly better. And though there were huge consequences eventually to 
their drinking because it was such an easy fix in the moment for how they were feeling. They just kept doing it. And uh, it became clear to me that alcohol is not the initial problem. Alcohol is the alcoholic's solution to feeling better about the underlying thing that they are all always already feeling. And that's why also when you get sober and you don't drink anymore, you're always considered an alcoholic because you are an alcoholic with even without the alcohol. You have an underlying condition that needs to be treated and Drinking alcohol was the thing that made you feel better, but you realize after a certain amount of time that it's probably making things worse and that's when you want to get sober. But even when you get sober, you're still an alcoholic. You, you, I will consider myself a recovering alcoholic probably forever because alcohol wasn't causing my issues. I always had something underlying and I was drinking to make myself feel better about those things. And I think that when someone who's an alcoholic becomes sober, it's really easy to go back if you're not treating your life properly and you're not replacing alcohol with something else it could be therapy it could be medication whatever it is but I think it's so important to know that if you get sober like you are probably in need of some other medication some some other form of feeling better which you didn't have before which is why you drank anyway I just want to say that because I think that there's a real stigma with people who are alcoholics, but at the end of the day, they're literally just people who are suffering inside and they found a way to make themselves instantaneously feel better. And it just sort of became a snowball effect, making the situation worse, but like, you know, in, in the moment, it, it was better. And that's really what it boils down to, honestly. I myself am a very anxious person. I have very debilitating OCD, which when I got sober came back in full force. I've now been medicated and I go to AA meetings, which is sort of like group therapy. So managing to control it in a much more sustainable way, as opposed to drinking alcohol every time I feel bad, which is not sustainable. I probably would have eventually gone to jail or gotten really ill or even, you know, died. It's just not a sustainable way of living. But I'm all, I'm always going, no matter how sober I get, not how sober, no matter how long I'm sober for, there's always a chance I'm gonna go back. Like there are no guarantees in sobriety. You never know if you're gonna be sober forever. You also cannot think that way. Uh, you cannot think, oh, I'm gonna be sober forever. I'm never gonna have another drink. Like you can't think like that because that'll freak you out so much. You have to just think like, just for, the just for today, I'm not gonna drink. And it kind of has to be like that every day. And it's not always easy. And especially if you go through something that's quite stressful or quite upsetting, heartbreak or whatever, like it's really, really hard to stay sober sometimes. And so for anyone who's doing it, like I applaud you because it's, it's not easy. I'm gonna talk a bit about my own experience. I grew up in London, born and raised. I'm actually in London right now, so it kind of seems like the perfect setting to do this episode in because pretty much all of my drinking I did in London at my mom's house, which is exactly where I am right now. She moved house, I'm not in the exact same house, but I'm definitely like in the, the headspace of me as a child, <laughs> a little bit more here than I am like in LA, which is where I usually live. So I grew up in London, London has, all of England actually, has a very strange drinking culture. We spend pretty much every event at the pub. If you're going to the park with friends, you're gonna bring some beers. If you're doing anything, it probably involves drinking. If you're going out to see friends, you're usually going out for a drink. If you're going for lunch, you're gonna be at a pub. It's just like drinking all the time. It's so normalized. And I think that's why in the beginning, I did not notice a problem with me because everyone was kind of doing it. Maybe I drank a bit more than everyone else, but like everyone was doing it and so what? Um, the only reason I ever thought maybe I was a little bit different to everyone else was because I had a lot of alcoholism in my family. So I grew up with it. I knew what AA was from a young age. Uh, I knew what an alcoholic was from a young age. Um, and I think that sometimes I would be like, am I an alcoholic? Then I would be like, I probably just think that because I know alcoholics, it's in my head. I'm not an alcoholic, uh, I'm just being dramatic, you know? So I spent a lot of time making mistakes, doing crazy stuff. I started drinking at the age of 14, I think. Um, not heavily, but definitely started dabbling in drinking at that age. Uh, I was a very awkward teenager. And I think drinking really made me feel secure, much more confident. I really had no confidence, but I wasn't a heavy drinker at 
14. I think maybe when I was 16, I started drinking a lot hev more heavily. But whatever, I was with my friends and everyone was doing it and, you know, everything seemed fine. Maybe I would black out more than my friends. Maybe I'd go to parties a little bit more and not forget, not remember anything, forget everything. But I kind of thought everyone was doing that, so whatever. When I got, when I turned 18, I finished school. I didn't really have a plan. I didn't really have huge goals at that point. I was not planning to go to college like most of my friends were. I, I just didn't really know what I was doing. And I sort of allowed myself some time to not stress about it, but that time became much, much, much too long. I sort of spent about a year doing nothing but sitting around drinking. Every night, I started making lots of different groups of friends around London because what if that one group of friends, you know, what if they were going to work tomorrow, they couldn't drink, I needed someone else to drink with. And I started making friends like all around London and, you know, with people that I probably wasn't meant to be friends with, but that just became my thing. I was just like the party person. Everyone sort of came to me if they wanted to have a, you know, wild time. And that was kind of what I did for like a year. Still not really noticing a huge issue. Drugs were also starting to get involved, which they hadn't really been before. Maybe a couple times, but not as heavily as this. This started becoming every weekend we were picking up stuff to do. I was picking up stuff to do. So that became a whole new level of problems, you know. I was spending an insane amount of money. It was allowing me to drink a lot more. And it was allowing me to drink for longer. I would stay up for days. Obviously, the next morning when you wake up, you feel your feelings a thousand times worse. And then that would cause me to drink in the morning. And it, it really did start snowballing at that point. At 19, I moved to LA for one year. I went to college there and I really started drinking badly there. I got really depressed and I would drink and then I would wake up in the morning and pour myself a glass of wine in the morning and go back to sleep and wake up. And I, I did this for a year. Most depressed I'd ever been. I was living in downtown LA. I was so lonely. I really didn't know what to do. Uh, so I ended up dropping out of that college after a year and I moved back to London. But I definitely knew I wanted to live in London. I mean, I definitely knew I wanted to live in LA. That was a huge dream of mine. And this this time didn't work out, but I knew that I had to go back at some point. So I spent a bit more time in London doing the same stuff literally not improving anything, uh, going out every night, making more strange friends just so I would have someone to hang out with. And then eventually I did move back to LA. Eventually I got a job, internship, at a gallery in LA. Moved there with no plan except for that. Found myself a little tiny apartment. I couldn't drive, which is a problem, but honestly, thinking back on it now, I'm so thankful that I didn't know how to drive because if I had gotten behind a wheel in that state, in the states that I would get myself in, and I know that I would have driven in those states if I had the means to, but thank God, I only ever learned to drive when I got sober. Thank God. I am like, every day I'm thankful for that. And it's like the one thing, if everything else sort of feels whatever, like the one thing that will always hopefully keep me sober or on the right track, hopefully, is that I can now drive and I do not ever want to get behind a wheel drunk, ever. Anyway, I found the means to get around. I met people in LA, not great people, but I met people nonetheless. I would go to my internship and things got a little bit better then because I had an internship, I would wake up in the morning, go there, go to work, leave the gallery, go home, watch a movie and go to bed. You know, I, I had a slight sense of purpose, which I had been lacking for the whole time before. And then, as I feel like things are kind of getting all right, uh, COVID happens. And that happened, I think, four weeks after I moved to LA. I had an internship for about a month, yeah. I moved to LA in January, and I think February-ish, March, was when things started to shut down. I did not know what to do at the, that point. I went into work one day, and she, my my boss was getting all these phone calls, all the galleries were shutting because of COVID and they were like, okay, like, I think we should probably shut for the day. I think everyone is shutting. We don't know what's going on. And I remember my boss saying like, I'll call you on Monday and let you know, like when we'll open again. And obviously I never got the call, but they remained closed for how long? Like two years, something insane. So I was definitely thrown into a strange situation at that point. I had just moved there, just just arrived in LA for the second time wanting to make this 
time work so badly. All of a sudden, everything that I had to do during the day to keep me busy was gone. And now I was just sort of in this apartment. I had not really any friends. I hadn't had time to make that many friends. I didn't know what to do. So I was like, I'm gonna have to probably move back to London, which was so upsetting to me. Uh, I felt really like things were kind of going well. It all kind of got like swept from underneath me, like in a moment. <sighs> So yeah, the one thing that I did do in the month that I was there was I met a man who was very lovely and we had been on a couple dates and I remember calling him and saying like, oh, I don't know what to do. My work has just shut. I probably think I have to go back to London. And me and him did not know each other that well, but we were kind of like, you know what? Like, he was like, why don't you just stay here for a while? Like, we can hang out. We can sort of do this thing together. You really feel like you want to go back to London then I'll get you a ticket and you can go. And you know, I didn't want to move back to London. And so I was honestly so relieved at this <laughs> at this suggestion. I did not want to be the one to suggest it. That would have been crazy of me if I was like, hi, like, I don't know anyone but you, but I really want to stay here. Like, can you be my friend? But luckily he suggested it first. So I was like, thank God. And me and him ended up hanging out the whole COVID time. COVID was such an interesting thing because it was such an adjustment for everyone. Being at home all day, um, was just such a strange feeling when you knew that no one else was going out. It was just the strangest thing. Um, I realized how much I took for granted, like going to the grocery shop or going to the gas station or anything, like so weird you couldn't do anything. Uh, it was such an isolating, strange time. I just moved to LA and I was so excited to go see the sights. I was so excited to go like to a strip club or like go to cool bars or like hang out at people's houses. like. And all of that was just not existing at all. So I was drinking a lot during the beginning of COVID, like a lot, because we kind of didn't have anything else to do. I spoke to people recently about it actually, and a lot of people that I've met uh, got sober during COVID as well actually, because it just sort of threw everyone through such a weird loop that they did not know how to handle it. They did not know what to do with themselves, which is just exactly how I was. A few pretty bad nights. Uh, during COVID, pretty bad. Um, I had a bunch of really bad nights before COVID, don't get me wrong, but something about these times just felt different. Like, really felt like I cannot do this anymore. The man I had met, who is actually now my husband, since about three weeks ago, he felt very important to me quite early on. And they always say that you should get sober for yourself, which I agree with. But I think that if there is someone or something there that you feel like you might lose, and that's just the sort of trigger to start you getting sober, like, I don't think you can stay sober if you don't want to be sober inside. But I think that if there's someone or something and you're like, oh my god, if I keep doing this, I'm not going to be with them, I'm going to lose this person, I'm going to lose what's going on in my life, like, that'll scare you. And sometimes you need a little bit of a fright and I think that before I'd met him I had nothing really to lose you know I just sort of felt like I was floating through life I didn't really have a job and I just like kind of felt like I had nothing really to lose everything was so tumultuous and I felt like I was just sort of floating along this like strange lifestyle with no real consequences I knew my parents were always going to be there you know selfishly entitled in my thinking I was like my parents are always going to be there my family's always going to be there what do I have to lose I'm just going to keep being like this because I kind of feel like some parts of it are fun when I met him, I, it, 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 it scared me a little bit more and made me really think. And one, one night after a bad night, I kind of woke up with him on the phone to my mom, who was in London. And uh, that's when it became real, really real. That's when I felt like, oh my god, this is bigger than me. This feels a bit scary now. So I decided to do something very strange and I decided to join an AA meeting. I had one short, short stint of sobriety about a couple years earlier. Super short, I had never planned to stay sober. Okay, hi, sorry, my camera got too hot. Anyway, as I was saying, a few, I think maybe a couple years ago, uh, before, a couple years before this, I had a very short stint in sobriety. I think I was sober for like a month or something. And I really know that back then I had no plan to be sober forever but for some reason I decided to go to a bunch of AA meetings not really you know planning to stay but I had gotten a couple people's phone numbers so when it came to the point where I really felt like I needed to take this seriously I rifled through my phone and tried to find 
a phone number of someone I had met at a meeting and I texted someone and I said hi like you definitely don't remember me but I met you at this meeting and I really am in a bad place and I really need to get sober and can you suggest any meetings for me to go to? Obviously I needed to confirm that I knew her, obviously she was like who is this person? I don't remember them, which is fair enough. But after that, she suggested a bunch of places for me to go. Obviously, all the AA meetings were now online on Zoom um, because everything was closed for COVID. So I received a bunch of logins uh, for Zoom meetings and I just got on them and I started messaging people on the Zoom meeting saying, hi, I'm new, I need to get sober, what do I do? When I initially decided to get sober this time, I was so nervous because I was like, in my head, sober people are old men smoking cigars, you know, in the back room of a church. Like, I'm gonna be this young girl and I'm not gonna know anyone or feel familiar with anyone. And I couldn't be more wrong. It was a complete shock whenever I logged into the Zoom meetings I was suggested because it was all these like amazing young women who I felt so close to immediately and felt so connected with and I just had no idea that the sober community was anything like what what it was. I, I had no idea. I really didn't think that it was a very popular thing for young people to be doing and I was so wrong about that. And I very, very, very quickly met a bunch of really amazing women who kind of took me in. I got a sponsor who I still have today and uh, it was really, really scary because you sort of have to commit to it, you know, not forever but you have to know in that moment when someone says, are you ready to get sober? You have to sort of feel it inside and know that you're giving up a bunch of things that you're used to in your life. And that really freaked me out, but I was ready. And I think a couple of weeks in, and this is quite common, I think, but it, a couple of weeks in, you kind of forget the bad things that you did when you were drunk. You kind of forget how horrible you felt the next the next day. And you sort of become a little bit like, what am I doing? Why, why am I sober? You forget about the bad stuff uh, and it happens really really quickly and it happened really quickly with me and I needed things and I needed people to keep me what's the word what is the word to keep me what to keep me um what is the word it's like when someone's there to like keep you accountable I don't know why I couldn't think of that word and I had that in this group of people I had people to say look like I know you feel like it was all a bit dramatic joining this group but there was a reason you called me and there was a reason you felt desperate enough to call. And I think that you need to remind yourself of that because of course you can go back drinking. Um, and of course you can, you know, try and get sober again. But what's what's going to happen in a couple weeks from then? You're going to forget and do it all over again. And I really had to remind myself every single time. I felt like that. I had to remind myself, like, why did I do this in the first place? Like, it must have been horrible how I was feeling. Because it was such a strange thing to do. You know, I don't think people join AA unless they're really feeling quite desperate. But anyway, I really decided to stick with it. I felt my life improved pretty quickly, I have to say. There's a few things that, you know, I had issues with. What was that Pepper? And my cat's sitting right with me. I've had Pepper since I was like 12 years old. She's the best cat. Anyway, I decided to stick with it. And I definitely felt, yeah, I felt my life improve pretty quickly. I will say that there were times where I absolutely hated it. I would go to parties and feel completely out of place. I had not really developed my like sober confidence at all. So I was sort of at these places that I didn't want to be at with no sort of security blanket, which was for me alcohol and other things. And I just felt so awkward. I felt so out of place. I felt like everyone else was cooler than me. Like, why couldn't I just be like them? Because, you know, they can drink and be normal. Actually, as time went on, I realized that a lot of the people that I looked up, not looked up to, but a lot of the people that I was like jealous of became sober in the end, actually. And it's quite interesting. The people that you think have it all figured out, like they don't. But in the beginning it was like, I am a mess and everyone else is cool and I'm not. It was also really hard because I had spent so much time or oh, wasted time drinking and everything that when I got sober, I didn't really have anything going on. You know, I, I felt completely like I was nothing and I had no purpose. Alcohol was very strange. It can honestly make you feel like that is your purpose in life. And so when I didn't have that and I first got sober, I also didn't have really anything else. I had no interests. I was just sort of left by this disease in a complete state of like nothingness. And it took me a while to figure things out. It took me a while to learn what I liked, what I didn't like. It took me a while to understand what kind of 
coffee I like, it took me a while to understand like what I like to spend my day doing. After a while, I sort of went back to what I used to do when I was a kid, which is painting. I basically spent the entire time of COVID in a garage painting and it gave me such an outlet to express my emotions and I am so grateful for that because I don't know what I would be doing during that time if it wasn't for that. And uh, uh, yeah, I'm now painting school. I never went to school because I was not taking life seriously at all. But over COVID, I managed to get together quite a few pieces of work. And someone suggested maybe you should go to school because you've never been. And uh, I was feeling a bit like a yes man at that point. And I was like, you know what? I am. I'm going to try and go. And I got in. And uh, it's so interesting how life just builds up like that without you even really realizing. But uh, yeah, I, I'm at school. I'm still at school. I got a couple years left to go. But, you know, every day is still tricky some days are much easier than others but it's you know it's difficult it's a constant thing it's not something you can just say oh I stopped drinking this one time and just you've forgotten about it it's a constant thing that you have to be considering like should I go to this party do I really need to be there or uh, how late am I meant to be staying at this thing you know should I be hanging out with these people are they right for, for me um I had a lot of let a lot of friends go friends go when I got sober they were people that I thought were my friends in fact I think they were just sort of drinking buddies um you know never really got a call from any of them saying like are you okay how are you you know once I got sober the phone definitely stopped ringing quite a lot and that was really hard in the beginning but uh, I have the most amazing group of people around me now that I really like would never I would never have met if it wasn't for this change never and the thing is is that if I were to drink one day or if I were to do something one day, I know that I have like a group of people behind me that are supporting me and I wouldn't feel so alone like the first time. But yeah, you know, it's honestly the best thing I've ever done, um, the craziest thing I've ever done. And I definitely would never change my decision that I did do it back then. But you know, it's definitely not easy all the time. Definitely have moments where I'm like, ooh, like maybe I could have a little wine or a little this. And, you know, it's like, you really have to stay on top of it. And that's hard. It's like a full-time job, honestly. Especially in the beginning, it is literally a full-time job. Just staying sober. And I think you have to give yourself so much grace in those moments and say like, okay, maybe I didn't do any work today, but like I stayed sober and I stayed clear-minded. You know, maybe you had a super unproductive day or week, but in that time, you're like, you have to be so kind to yourself and say like, you are doing something massive right now. Like, don't worry about everything else just for now. Um, but yeah, I, you know, take it day by day. But uh, yeah, I think I'm going to probably stop there. There is so much more I could go into. It's crazy. I kind of feel like I just scratched the surface. But uh, if there's anything anyone ever wants to ask me specifically, then just like comment or DM me or something. Because this is a huge subject. And I could talk for days about it, but I think this video is already going to be quite long. So I'm probably going to stop now. But just if you're feeling lonely and you feel like maybe something I said was kind of relevant to you, like literally feel free to reach out. I know it's it means like worlds to have someone who is there to talk to, who actually understands. So uh, yeah. But anyway, I really love you guys. I am very excited to start this podcast I really hope that I said something relevant to at least one person. And if there's anything that I didn't cover within this topic that you want to know about, like literally let me know. I'm an open book when it comes to this. I feel like the stigma is so uncalled for and I am not ashamed of whatever is going on in that part of my life. So anyway, I would love to answer any more questions if anyone has any more. But uh, for now, I will say... Thank you so much for listening. I love you guys so much. Even if it has nothing to do with sobriety, let me know if you want me to talk about anything specific and I will see if I can answer it. But otherwise, I love you. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, and if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. It's super helpful to me. And uh, you can know every time I post any more content. So anyway, I love you guys. I'll see you next time. Thank you so much for listening. Goodbye.